got the answers. I got all the answers. Okay. Let us paint something really weird. Let's do this. Do you guys have any uh, questions? Can you guys hear me? I'm assuming you guys can hear me, but afraid. I do, I'm typing mine out in notepad real quick. Notepad? Notepad. Notepad. All right. Anyone else is welcome to talk. I feel lonely. I'm just talking to myself. Oh, so lonely. When you are painting, do you start with a clear design or image in your mind or do you just go with the flow? A little bit of both. Uh, mostly a little bit of both, but, or I'm sorry, that's not a good way of saying that. Uh, yes, it is a little bit of both, but mostly I don't really think about it. The way that I think about painting is the same way you think about walking. I just don't do it. Nobody thinks about walking, they just walk. And the reason why I say that is because it is, because I've been painting for so long, I don't really think about it anymore. And I, I feel like that I should start thinking a little bit more about it, not because I feel like that's what I should do, but just because it'll help me um, come up with interesting things to draw. Like right now, I thought, I'm going to draw like some abstract giant thing that's like connected to the, the groin area of this object. And see how that goes. Yeah, see how that goes. But that's pretty much yeah how I think. I don't I don't have like a, any deep meaning, and the way they get to get to the stage of skill is to just paint so much. Uh, I've been painting for nearly 10 years and I've been painting very similar things for nearly 10 years. Like not, I haven't even changed that much of what I like to paint. And so it's, it's kind of, it's not that impressive if you really think about what it is that I do. I paint the same kind of weird shit, but then, but because you paint so much, so much of the weird shit, you start thinking of beyond the weird shit. So you really pull from the back of your mind a lot. You really pull from like these, these ideas that are just so really bizarre and abstract. That makes sense. I have an image from an artist that works in the industry and it's a collection of the type of, uh, the type of stuff or sort of things you should have in your portfolio, including sketches, variation, turnaround details, call outs, expression, single renders, lineups and splash arts. What would you say? are the most important things to include out of these. I'm unsure of how much of each thing I should be in including. Ashamed, right? I have it on my wall. Oh, Ahmed, right? I have it on my wall. Ashamed. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you should have specifically the types of things that you think your client would want. So this is why like you'll hear advice that I also agree with 
that will say to you, you should put in your portfolio the kinds of things that you would like to get work in. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? And, and that's true. So if you see a company who wants a lot of like flowy, fun, painted concept art, then you should have that in your portfolio. Uh, if you like a company that wants photorealistic lineups, then you should have that in your portfolio. But generally speaking, the most valued things you should actually have in your portfolio or like the consistent things that I think are agreed upon is a, a bunch of sketches, like kind of like what you guys did for the iterations, uh, a final render of some sort, and an orthographic, like a turnaround. Because that's pretty much a universal process for each and every company that I can think of. Because you can demonstrate, you can do variations with the sketches. You can demonstrate that you can take those variations to some sort of completion. And then you can also take that completed illustration or drawing into some sort of uh, usable orthographic that is um, used by a modeler. Uh, everything else is, is not necessary, but uh, isn't, um, isn't so uncommon that it, you will be asked to do it like animation shots and stuff like that or facial expressions or lineups the, these types of things so i think what that image may do more is just show all the things that you can do but it doesn't necessarily you should do all of them i think those three are the most realistic and most if you had to like focus in uh, i mean even in my own portfolio i don't really have orthographics except for a few right but because because my images look so um great even without any orthograph like people can kind of assume that most likely i can do orthographics because I, I have some good skill already you know what i mean it would be weird if i couldn't paint my designs orthographically but it could happen there, there, i'm sure there's people out there who cannot even though they paint with really good stuff um maybe what it is is less that they can't but more like they just are bored of it and don't want to. It's probably a more realistic answer. And uh, how many portfolio pieces should you have in your portfolio? Is that what you're kind of asking? Uh, I usually aim for like a good handful, like 12 to 24 images. It's pretty good. The more, the better. You should have like the best 10 to 15 maybe in your in the very in the very front and then if you just have a lot after that it's great it just shows that you're capable of working a lot that's all that does if you have a lot of images floating around like if you go to my portfolio that's pretty much what happens so i have to constantly go over there uh, every month or so and just reorganize it so i can put some of the better pieces up front because I do so many paintings. Like maybe too many. But no, glad that it was helpful. Any other questions? Does anyone want to talk to me? That's so long. You don't have to. But I feel so long. All right. So let's see if I can add. That's a little too dark. Yeah, that's more believable. I think what it is why I felt that was too dark is because the values around it are very similar. But I should be reminded that those values will change once I start to put in shadow values for these. 
and then that contrast will come in. Are you and Ross Tran buddies? Yes, we are. I saw your videos you guys did a while ago. You guys are funny dudes. I'd love to see you guys do another video like that. Just uh, uh, recommend it to them. And then maybe we'll get together again. Uh, I've been trying to meet up with them. We've been trying to get lunch, but we're busy dudes. He's, he's probably more busy than I am, actually. But he's really, he's a very nice guy. Wish him the best of luck in all that he does. All right, so now let's. Oh, what the? It's the Control G stuff. I need to find a way to like shut off hotkeys. All right. So let's go ahead and add some vibrance to this painting now. Let's go and grab this. And then let's put like vivid light on this and see what happens. Just trying to get colors and stuff that I wouldn't normally paint with. And then paint around this. Let's do some color dodge. So the, heat, the, the thing that I'm doing now, or color burn rather, or let's do linear burn. The thing that I'm doing now is just trying to, trying to put myself in a situation that would be challenging. It's like cutting myself so I, I know that I'm still alive. But uh, I'm doing this just because I, I've, I've realized that I've been painting a lot of like the same stuff and I've been on autopilot a lot. And it's not because I don't like the stuff that I paint. I actually love almost everything that I paint. But, but I do like to challenge myself from time to time. And I think what it is is I'm feeling that fulfillment of challenge through, uh, not through art anymore, through programming. Uh, but I do want to become a better artist. So I need to find ways to do that. Uh, and so I do demos every time for my classes. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to do that. I, I got another sketchbook to accompany my son and our journeys to become better artists. But uh, me specifically, I'm going to try to learn how to become a better artist via, um, painting or drawing my left hand. So I got a, a sketchbook that I'm going to try to better my skills left-handed. It's already started. He gave me some homework. I need to work on it. So that he can be proud of me. But he's been putting in some work. All right, so this is good. So let's go and start to clean up this mess and see what we can do. Do people judge you because you paint scary things? And how do you feel about it? Just curious since I like dark stuff too. I don't know if people judge me. If they do, I don't know about it. It's not like judge. you draw weird shit and they tell it to my face. Uh, what I do see happen, which is pretty fun, is that like uh, I'll paint something and really weird and dark and and people when they meet me, especially in real life, they'll they'll learn that I'm just like very uh, an average person. Uh, I'm pretty good at speaking and I'm really find great ways to motivate people, inspire people. But I think that's all training. But when you really really get to know me, I'm just like everyone else. Obviously, there's nothing unique about me. 
uh, I'm just very disciplined, uh, especially when it comes to skill oriented things. Um, not in everything, but definitely skill oriented stuff. Like when I choose to get good at something, I get good. You know what I mean? And, and I, and because I know that I'm not anything special, uh, that I didn't come from some sort of magical, uh, life that allowed me to have these types of skills. Uh, that's why I think I be, I'm also a pretty great teacher is because I, I'm very, um, down to earth, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm humble, but definitely down to earth, very relatable. Like uh, everything that I explain to people generally resonates. Like, hey, yeah, of course that makes sense for me too. You know? And I think that's, that's why I do well. And, but so that's like kind of the thing that I think is fu funny is most people think that I, they expect something different. They expect that I would be a little bit more like philosophical, but no, I like dick jokes and stuff like that. Like we were, it was funny cause we were talking uh, at a restaurant and one of the things on the menu is called the, um, Barcelona style and I kept on making jokes that like Barcelona style is just a bunch of dudes jerking off in a circle <laughs> and we were just all laughing and but that's like the stuff that I I talk about it's like normal stuff I'm nothing like I think it's funny because when I started having political views people started to be like wait what the I didn't know that you had those views <laughs> and I'm like yeah why wouldn't I like like what in what world did you envision me having other, any other views and if so why why did you think that i could not be allowed to have these opinions or why did you not expect that i would have these opinions and as for would i care let's say the people did care i drew dark stuff again I, I don't draw dark stuff because i'm like a dark i'm like a horror fanatic like i love horror films and stuff like that i like monsters but i'm not like the the kind of person that's like monster mania does it make sense um i like to just paint stuff and I like to focus on technicality and it just so happens to be that monsters and creatures are technically challenging. Does that make sense? And so, so because they're challenging to do that, that's what brings the attraction. Like right now I'm like trying to learn how to develop a 3d, uh, 3d rendering uh, tool. I'm like, I'm actually trying to create my own 3d software like application from the ground up, uh, specifically using VR. And um, I think it would be really challenging. And the challenge is incredibly rewarding. Like I, I feel I want to get in it every day. Like if I have to do freelance, I got to make sure I get the classes going. And I, so I haven't done anything today to really progress myself. I've been watching some videos, but I really want to get in there. Uh, I made my first triangle just through pure code. Right? In fact, if I get some progress on this, I would love to just show you what I've learned and see if I can do it in a short amount of time, just code it from memory. Yeah, but, over, but overall, like I really don't, uh, I'm a normal dude, and I really don't care about other people's opinions. And, and you hear people say that, trust me, you hear like a lot of people make that assertion, but most people don't actually believe in that. Like people will say that, um, a lot and I find that people who actively say I don't care about people's opinions without people asking like you asked me right so that's why I said it but if, if you didn't ask me I'm like I don't care what people think uh, there's a there's a big chance that you, they actually may care about what people think and they are trying to get ahead of it before people asked right but I generally do not care what people think um, especially if it's negative uh, I do care about what people need and the kinds of things that will affect their lives to help improve their lives. So in that essence, I do care about what you think about. If I feel like it's something that is uh, holding you back, that's holding your lifestyle back or holding your progression, that that kind of stuff does get in my nerves or not not nerves, but that does definitely gets under my skin in a way that makes me want to help. But if you're looking at me and you're saying, Oh, you're stupid or you're like this or that, um, I generally don't get too bothered by it. Um, I, I can think of some instances where I do get frustrated. Let's say like whenever people have dissenting points of views and aren't like, I really get frustrated 
when people are intellectually dishonest. Like they, they, they're smart enough to understand my argument, but they're willfully ignoring it or ignoring it. That kind of stuff will get on my nerves. It's, it's, it's hard to describe. It's, I think it's really primal. So that's probably why I can't get over it. But uh, with time, if time goes by, I usually would be like, oh man, why did I let it get under my skin? Like this is why I stopped having too many political rants. And this is why like I will make a statement and then I can see that people are starting to get really, <laughs> really aggro. And then I will actively go to my Facebook, disable notifications, because I think my part of the conversation has ended. Uh, and sometimes I go in there, I'll rebut, but then after a while I'm like, all right, time is being wasted. And even so, like my friend, he posted this thing that I disagree with him. And I said, all right, I'll leave you alone. Because I, I really didn't want to argue anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I just wanted to make a point. And he heard the point. He made his point. And I, I can see that the conversation, uh, there's no way that I was going to convince him. Uh, unless we're like in the same room. It's easier to convince people when you're talking to them personally than in like some sort of chat room. And so I just removed myself from the situation. Because I don't really don't care if they don't agree with me or not. I only care uh, if I feel like they're, they're wrong and they need to hear something that will hopefully will just be brewing in their mind and hopefully they may think differently in the future, which is statistically very low. So I generally try not to do that too often. But that's my, the long way of saying uh, I don't think people judge me and if they did, I don't care. And it's not to even, let me make a strong point here, by the way. I think sometimes people think that because you're being judged, that's bad inherently. I don't think judging people is inherently bad. I think judging people that without any merit is bad. And I think when you give people opinions that have merit, they say, stop judging me. I think that's deflection, right? And I don't agree with that. But if like, you don't like, for instance, like this, I was watching, I just shared this video earlier today about like some guy at a, a shop saying, this is America, speak English. That's clearly fucking stupid. Uh, and then later to, in, this, in the same day, which is today, I saw another video of some guy like at a coffee shop, like telling some girl with like a hijab, like that she was like wearing a Halloween costume and that he doesn't like Muslims. And they kicked them out of the coffee shop. And I'm just like thinking, there's like the black couple that got kicked out. There was another incident, or those black group, or black, two black guys got kicked out of a Starbucks. And there was another incident at another Starbucks. <laughs> and that's why I posted uh, just moments ago before even class started that it's really hard to get coffee if you're a racist, apparently. <laughs> but it's obviously a sarcasm. Like, of course it is. Um, but it's just, uh, yeah, th those types of things obviously frustrate me. And I think people like those need to like get like put in the limelight, get their lives capsized a little bit. Can't be rocking around saying stupid shit to hurt people's feelings that is not warranted. There is no um, warrant or merit around some of the judgment. Yeah, maybe you have your opinions. Maybe those opinions... Um, have some sense of factual information at some level, but not enough for you to berate and treat everyone like the thing that you hate or disagree with, you know? Like, so for instance, um, I understand why people would be upset at the Muslim religion, for instance, because there is, you know, statistically a lot of terrible things that come from that religion specifically. But it doesn't mean that out of the one point what is it like 1.8 billion 1.5 it's like a freaking almost a quarter or a, or a fifth of the uh of the planet is like muslim it's statistically insignificant the amount of terrorist attacks that come from muslim states so th so to have the assertion that every muslim you run into is a potential terrorist is ridiculous just like it's it's ridiculous to assume that every american is a mass shooter right statistically is really small but it's still a problem. It's still a thing that we should address and find solutions to. 
but the solution isn't to go up to people, random people you don't know, you know nothing about, and just assume that they're terrorists. That's clearly backwards and and not realistic. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there is one facet of it that I can understand why people are, are upset and afraid, but they have to get their facts straight so that they can see that there's different ways of uh, rectify some of these solutions or rectify some of these problems that they may have uh, and find different solutions. That's what frustrates me. People aren't intellectually in, uh, honest. That's what that means. Like you can, I can tell you the facts, I can show you the statistics and you just won't agree with it for whatever reason. That kind of stuff gets under my nerve. All right. Makes sense, but unexpected. I would like to also touch, uh, I would also like to be able to sculpt in Zeros as a secondary art related skill. Would you recommend jumping into something or jumping into that as soon as I can or hold off until I further my design slash painting skills. My concern is that I would sp spend valuable time moving in the wrong direction. I think you should try to practice and, and put some time into every tool, right? At no cost to learning design, okay? And design is the thing that you really want to focus your attention on. You don't want to focus your attention on painting per se. Uh, not to say that painting has no skill or has no merit or value in the future, it's just that painting itself is also a tool. Like I'm painting this design, sure, but uh, I can design it and I'm just happy to use painting as my tool. I'm using Photoshop as my tool. Uh, I'm sure I can come up with the same aesthetic using different tools, you know? And, and the only reason why I can't do it right at this moment is because I'm not, um, I am not skilled at those t said tools. Does that make sense? So learning ZBrush, especially if you, focus in on the same kind of genre of like style of art, it, it will actually not hold you back. It'll actually potentially give you more value because you'll, you'll not only increase your skill in another tool, you'll start to see things a little bit differently because of that other tool. Because I started learning how to do uh, programming, I understand programmers much easier and understand software a little bit better. Uh, and then once I started learning visual programming, specifically graphic arts, learning about normals, uh, UVs, at like a programmer's level, right, where I'm actually programming this stuff in, um, now I even have a greater sense of what's going on. And that's like really valuable information that I, I can't believe I was so ignorant to before. I mean, there was no need to really understand it at the level that I was at, but uh, understanding it is profoundly powerful. And hopefully that makes sense to you. Yep, and that's what I said. So hopefully that will give you more of a push to try it out. Yeah, I mean, think about it. I can use Blender, 3D Coat, Maya, Silo, um, ZBrush, uh, some other like LCAD, or not LCAD, some CAD-based tools. I'm pretty, pretty skilled at multiple different tools. So yeah, absolutely, I'm a big fan of using different tools. Any other questions? I, mean, I think people are going to definitely enjoy this image. Is it important to be active in social media in order to get a job? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just active engagement in, in the industry is really important it, because it just gives you an opportunity to get your work out there. 
I like to use Kim Jong Ji because there was a time where Kim Jong Ji was an unknown artist. Nobody knew of him. And then one day, one of his friends decided to record a video of him painting, or not painting, I'm sorry, drawing one of his amazing kinds of illustrations. And it just went viral. And it wasn't like he came out of nowhere. People treat him like a god, like some sort of art god that just came out of nowhere. I don't see him as an art god. I look at him just like any other artist that I admire. Um, I don't see him any better or any worse. And and what it is, what it comes down to, what I appreciate is that he's just really good. And he's clearly put the practice in and that he deserves his skill. And whenever people is like, I don't know like how he draws, what he does is just incredible. And I'm like, um, he filled up closet full of sketchbooks. Like, have you done that? And most people's answer to that question is no. And I say, well, that's why you don't paint like Kim Jong Ji. It's not a mystery solved. You know, for whatever reason, people make it seem like he just is some sort of talent. No, the the, the talent idea comes from the the sense that we didn't know, we didn't know about him, and it just seems like he just crept up on us. You know what I mean? Like nobody sees the adventure between, right? Nobody see, saw him when he was just drawing crappy drawings in between. They only see him for his ex excellence now. And I can see why that's a little bit, um, that's a little bit like mystical, but it's just, it's, it's explainable. It's not unexplainable, it's explainable. We can explain how, this, how it's possible. And, just to think that he was just doing whatever he was doing before. Uh, I'm sure making some money and living a good career. Uh, but then once that video went live, exploded his whole career. And now you look what he does. He's like on all, he's doing plenty of interviews. He's going on many different workshops. He's doing plenty of stuff now before he didn't. Now he is. And if you look at some of the most notable artists that you might admire, this is probably true for most of them, including myself. So yes, it's very important. And even if you're not getting a lot of followers, you're not getting a lot of attention at the moment, it's good practice. So as your work gets better, as you start to push your uh, social media presence, you'll only become more and more notable. There was a guy, it was funny, there was an artist that I was talking to and he at the time when I first met him two years ago, he didn't have a lot of followers. But it wasn't like that was the conversation that we had. It was just we were just talking and he was, he was a student artist. And now he has more followers than me. And he was making fun of me for it and it was fun. But, but I was just like, yeah, I mean, like you posted every day, right? And he's like, yep, every day posted something. And he was, he was giving me some tips. He's like, yeah, you should do videos like of you painting. Like he said, that would do really well on like on this social media. And I say, like, okay, maybe I should go back to doing stuff like that. You know? Um, I have a hard time figuring out what I should be posting to Instagram. Is it really raw, unfinished stuff worth posting or should I hold off for more polished pieces? Um, I mean, the fact is you should just be posting as often as you can. And at, at the beginning, if it's just shitty work, then you're probably not gonna do too well. Um, but what it does uh, as a consequence is that it gives you this discipline, right? Like the fact that you're like, I'm just gonna post every day right? Gives you in this incredible discipline of just like just doing it, like just this sense of just, uh, I just got to do it regardless of how I feel. And then that in itself fuels the other, fa uh, like I was going to say faction part, and I said fart almost, uh, the other part of what it takes to become a good artist, which is practicing. So you're practicing at two levels, you're not only are you being trying to keep yourself accountable, uh, accountable for 
uh, submitting work, you're also trying to have, uh, you're also practicing to get better with that accountability. So it's like a twofer. And you're also practicing social media skills. You understand? So it's like, it's kind of a, a, it's a triple threat win right there. You're getting better at painting because you're practicing. You're practicing your social media skills and you're promoting yourself consistently, con constantly. And so uh, bringing in that accountability that I was just talking about earlier. And I, I did it too. I, I did it like I did these really short blog posts for years. And they're like lost to the internet because I didn't renew my, um, didn't renew my, my, my blog spot, um, uh, account. So they took it, they took it. But, but I did it. I, I had like a blog that I posted all the time. And I think the same is true about like what I did with Facebook, like I, Facebook is where I took off. Um, but now Instagram is a place where I do pretty well. You know? So clearly putting that time in is incredibly valuable. Ever since I they implemented the change recently, my reach is like shit. <coughs> and what is the change that they implemented? Hashtags now show top photos instead of newest first by default. So what do you mean? Give me a scenario. So popular accounts get more attention easily. How do you know that's true? And is this for Instagram or is this for Facebook? Instagram. Uh, I, I don't ever hashtag my, my photos and they seem to do fine. So what I think you need to understand is and I, I don't disagree that there might be some, some uh, incentive for these social platforms to change their algorithms a little bit so that they can get more people to stay on their platform. But you have to consider that one of the most foolproof strategies is consistency. And that, yes, maybe that one image didn't get to the top. And maybe that second image didn't get to the top. And that third or fourth. But if you do it enough, and it's good, eventually someone will start seeing it. And if you're trying to get that fame overnight, then I, I don't think that's a good strategy, even, even uh, in general, because you want to earn every single follow. You don't want a, a bunch of people following you just because you happen to be good and got viral. You want people to follow you because of the merits of your work. And what better way to do that? Organic growth. Like I haven't hashtagged my images and I still get a tremendous amount of likes and follows. Um, and I think it's easier now because it's, it's exponential. Like I have a lot more followers now than I did in the past. And so more, more people share it and more and more people click it because the algorithm is unbiased. The algorithm says, yes, hashtags, let's do it. But hey, this image right here, for whatever reason, without the hashtags, is doing really well as well. Let's give it some attention. Because at the end of the day, the incentive of the, the company is to keep people on their platform as long as possible. Right? By any means necessary. 
And so if you want, if you have to do the hashtags, I know a lot of my friends do, I don't judge. And it's not me acting like an old man by saying I don't like these hashtags type of thing. It's just that um, I only want people to follow me because of my work, because my work is incredibly bizarre. And so to hashtag it would make it unnecessary intention. You know, like I don't want to have a high number of followers with the majority of them not really caring about anything that I do personally because they only like they only saw that one image that they liked once and then they don't really care about anything else. I want to get the people who saw my image and said, oh, that's fine, I don't care about it, and then let them slide through them. And then the next person sees them and is like, this is everything that I like. And then they click on my stuff and they follow me and then they continuously like my images. So then when I begin to perhaps create some sort of marketing around selling a class or tutorials or whatever, you understand kind of the point I'm making here? Then I have a more of an organic growth. And trust me, that's more valuable. You want that. How would, you, how would people reach your post without hashtags though? Let's say you have no followers. I mean, you're, you're thinking about it as if no one will ever like your work. I mean, I literally do not hashtag my images. Go through them, like maybe one or two. And then the hashtags I use are not the hashtags that are easily found, right? They're like really funny or obscure hashtags. And I do, I do it deliberately, right? I'm like, it's like almost me uh, making fun of hashtags, right? And yet I reached 101,000 followers. And it just keeps growing. Like when I was doing the 30 day, um, um, 30 day of posting images for like nearly like about a month ago or a month and a half ago, um, yeah, I, I gained like, it didn't slow down. And I'm sure the policies changed. And Facebook was the same way. Uh, I have noticed that Facebook has changed their algorithm so that um, most people will not click your image unless it's active. So maybe like you'll see this happen where political posts will do way better than like your own image. Anything that like sparks a conversation will generally do better. And so this is true. And so I, I generally will like people's comments more. I will comment on people's comments more to make my posts a little bit more active. But the algorithm is still there that if it's still really popular image, then people will generally go out of their way to follow it more. Right? Um, one thing that I started thinking about doing again was I used to have these posts where I would post like motivational snippets or advice via text. So I think I'm gonna do that again or video. And I think that's true because Facebook wants you to pay for ads. So they're trying to make traffic challenging uh, unless you use paid marketing. There was a time where it was like really golden, like when it was like you can pay for promoting on your own profile page. That was incredible time, but they got rid of that for whatever reason. is looking real bizarre. Let's see if we can add some more color back into this thing. I agree with you. I've been considering not tagging anymore because I hate spammers and followers for followers, but then I sacrifice the overall reach. Yeah, again, you're, you're being very short-sighted. You got to stop thinking about like, oh, I don't have, all. you're thinking about you're not getting that follower, that group of followers 
like right now. But I'm trying to tell you, like I got as many followers as I did, like literally like 20 or 30 a day. Like it wasn't like, like hundreds in one instance. It's like a couple dozen a day. And sometimes it'd be more than others on some days. And sometimes it just stayed lower than others. But, but on average, yeah, around that much. Right, because if we do the math, what is that? Because I did it for about five years. So if we do 20 times 365, right, 73,000, and then we do that for five years. So that, that alone, like the 20, 30, I got like a, a little over a third of followers, most likely in the beginning, just from that. But then it becomes exponential, right? So then every time, so in the first three or four years, maybe it was only like, well, first year, maybe like five or 10, but then it turned to 10 to 15, and then 15 to 20, to 20 to 25, to 30 to 35, 40 to 45. Because as I have more followers, those followers, there's a chance that they'll share or talk or mention of my work. Does it make sense? So it becomes exponential. So that if we put a, if we put a compound interest on top of this, it makes sense that it's probably at around 100,000 right now. And if we give another year, the compound interest might put me at 130,000 by the end of this year, you know, and then, or 120,000. And then another compound interest will put me, put me at 250,000 in another two years. And if I keep this up, uh, there's, there's a really big chance I might get millions of followers in, in another 10 years, you know? And the, the really important fact is that those followers may actually follow me because of my actual work. So in another 10 years, I may have a million uh, and a million that's well-deserved and well-earned. But I'm willing to wait 10 years. I've already waited five. Actually, I think I did four years. I don't think it was five. Maybe it was four, maybe three. And it helps that your work is good too. Don't forget that. Like the better your work, the easier it is, obviously. And like I said, it's just it compounds because then your work gets better, then guess what? You're gonna get more people to follow you. Right? In the beginning, it's definitely gonna be slow moving. Any other questions? But was a helpful advice. Let's move on. Any other questions, friends, colleagues? Do you think it's better to really focus on making one single kind of stuff or take time to learn a little bit of everything? I think you should do both, right? Um, the way that my friend phrased it, which I think I think is a perfect way of thinking about all of this, uh, be a master at one, but a jack of all trades. Or actually, I'm sorry, I said it wrong, it's backwards. Uh, it's good to be a jack of all trades, but a master of one. So it's good to have skills in multiple disciplines, but have some mastery of something first. And usually you should focus first on the mastery. And then and then kind of dive back into some of the other disciplines. But only that. 
like right now, for instance, I'm clearly a character concept artist that is my mastery, and now I'm learning programming and what have you. And I'm a pretty decent modeler, all this stuff. Yeah, I think this is good. This is deliberately, I want it to be sketchy. It's very perverted. I think it's gonna do well. I think people are gonna find something to like about it. Yeah, people tend to really like this kind of like I don't know how to clean up my edges type painting style. I think it's because they feel like they have it's attainable. But the irony is that it's like it's really, really challenging to do this unless you have some foundational skill. Meaning like you, you should actually know how to paint before even attempting this. At least if you want to pull it off. I wonder if I can put a filter on this to make this even more appealing to the masses. Let's see. So if I were to just do that, let's go to filter. I think it's other no stylized oil paints yeah you can like too much give it just one one application of texture why don't we try to find like painted painted canvas no that's not what I want oh, wait yeah actually there's some This is kind of what I want. But I want it without the color. I just want like the height. I think I could take this. Paint. White paint canvas texture. Thanks for the advice. I have to get along. All right. See you guys. Or see ya. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Nice. This will be nice texture to kind of overlay on top of all this. Maybe what I should do is actually scale it down and put this on multiplier, right? Multiplier. Linear burn is pretty badass what it did. I think multiply is the one that I want. And then and then just mess with the levels. So we just get the kind of effect that I'm looking for. And just erase around the corners. And then I can just kind of play with this.
try to create illusion of painting. All right. We'll do that. Let's group this together. So we can kind of control this intensity. I think opacity is what I want to affect. And then we can mask this off. I think this is actually, I should put this in there. And then areas where I want kind of my painting to pull through, I can just mask it out. And that should be fine. then give it kind of a sense of like a mother color. Like I use one or two limited palette. And then, but see, here's the thing, right? Like I'm like deliberately trying to make it look like it's unfinished painting, right? For a very specific effect. Yeah. And then let's make a color dodge layer. And then let's get the texture brush. And again, try to pop areas that I want to bring attention to. Mm. And then slow, reduce their influence. The layers below, so it's not too intense. And then let's see if I like the before and after. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think the changes on it's nice. Yeah, I'm cool with it. All right. All right, guys. I'm going to roll out now. Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks for all the good work. I'll see you guys over the weekend uh, starting next week. It's the final week, so tr try to push yourself beyond all reason. Try to make your fingernails bleed. Try to make your eyes fall out of your head as you're trying to refine these images. And with that being said, peace out. Talk to you later. Oh, the last day is the Friday of next week. Talk to you soon. Later. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.